The natural history of stroke is such that 15% of its victims will die. 10% will end up in long-term care facilities such as nursing homes. 40% may have moderate to severe disabilities. 25% may have minor impairments. And 10% will experience almost complete recovery. Now, Angela did not experience complete recovery, but she did restore her life to heights that, in my opinion, transcended her impairment. Now, I don't know how she did it. She did not make it in time for clot buster therapy, and she was knocking on death's door. Her survival had nothing to do with me. In fact, I didn't even think that she would survive. But sometimes there is no greater relief in life than being wrong. Sometimes there is no greater glory that when the human spirit defies scientific evidence and overcomes great tribulation in the fight for survival. And there is no better teacher for us doctors on the front line. It is a humbling experience. Two years after her devastating stroke, Angela is back at work and taking care of her two remaining children. She has lost 80 pounds. The remnants of her stroke are barely visible a subtle limp when she walks, and slight flattening of her right nasolabial fold. The last time she came to see me, she brought her two little children. Maya is 12 years old, and Joshua, six years old. Now, I remember watching them play together. I remember them giggling as they ran around my clinic. I remember them tugging on their mother's dress as I tried to examine her. And I remember thanking God that I was wrong. That day reminded me that modern medicine deals with odds and not absolutes. And that the end of certainty opens the door for the human spirit to shine. Rudyard Kipling said, if you can force your heart and nerves and sinews to serve you long after they are gone and so hold on when there is nothing inside you except your will. Yours is the earth and everything in it. It is our will, Kipling says, that can meet triumph and disaster and treat these two impostors just the same. Thank you very much.